Good evening, everyone. How are you? It's a warm one, isn't it? But the beer is cold and the beer is poured. Welcome to the live stream. The weekend starts here. Cheers. Ah. Anyway, how's everyone doing? Um, it's not my kind of weather, isn't this? I'm, I'm not built for this kind of heat. Um, you know, I'm just looking at my uh, little kind of thermometer on the desk here and um, 28 degrees in here. That I know to some people who are used to hotter climates than uh, <clears throat> what you tend to get in Yorkshire um, would laugh at 28 degrees, but it's, it's a bit too uh, sweaty for me, I'm afraid. <coughs> Excuse me. Still, I've got beer. Uh, let's have a look, see who's in, in the chat, who was first in, and what you've been talking about, and so on, and so on. Um, let's have a look. Edwin Toonin is first in, and Edwin is asking a question. Uh, is there any reason you almost only play your tribute, the Les Paul, I guess, uh, on most recent raids? The value of mine is increasing because of it, so thanks. Um... No reason. Um, what you got to remember is that the order that you see the videos in is very different from the order I make them in. Um, you know, for instance, I don't do a lot of lessons on a Friday or a Sunday. Uh, so I tend to do maybe, well, three, I've done three videos today uh, that will be going out over the next few weeks. And I'll probably be doing a similar amount on Sunday. And then... Um, you know, the, um, the, the videos tend to get made. I usually, uh, start, uh, me lessons. My first lesson is usually 10 a.m. on a morning and I'm up at half past five every morning. So by the time I've, you know, kind of, uh, got myself awake and breakfasted and showered and all of that, I've, I've got like a good two or three hours to, um, you know, to, uh, to basically work on videos and um so consequently you'll see a lot of videos that were made on the same day where i was playing the same guitar um the video that's the solo video that's going out on monday uh you're going to see me playing the uh, the nashville telecaster uh there behind me because uh, it was the perfect guitar for that but um in terms of the lessons and everything just the, the every day guitar that i tend to pick up it is always and we'll get this out of the way early on in the stream this is the one that i habitually always reach for um, and that said you know i didn't buy that tribute just to look at it um you know it's a lovely guitar and it's it is a bit of a special one because it's um it's the first gibson les paul i've owned in 30 years and it's the first les paul style guitar that i've ever really bonded with um maybe it's something to do with the satin finish on the neck maybe it's something to do with the fact that it towards the um in the spectrum of how les paul's sound it is towards the brighter end of the scale which means that it's much more appealing to me as a um as a kind of recovering telecaster addict um so yeah i do tend to pick it up but again today i've been playing um the uh this one uh, been playing this one a lot today because um i just needed something for what i was doing that sounded stratty um, so no real reason edwin that's it that's it anyway who else have we got in apart from edwin we've got grandpa joe phil phil rob bald uh johnny random dr gomez peter collins david evans and steve entwessel craig stamen how are you craig uh james hunt jeff c and scrolling down paul trainer kawas music and who else we got uh today cal b we've got johnny random we've got steve muskie and dave lewis uh lawrence hastings ian clark how are you ian John Ross is in, so is the Time Prophet, and Reeled in 58, and Anton and Patrick Becker. And did I say Lawrence Hastings already? I have now. Um, who else we got? Jack Collins, and Stuart Young, and uh, David Evans, and 
scrolling down. Colin Falcon, how are you, mate? Uh, Jonathan Peden and Green Wave. Chip Young's in, as is Dudley Squat and Peter S. And who else we've got? Steve Lamb and Nancy Davis and John Channing. And uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Mark Kerno. Uh, I, I apologise if I butchered, your, butchered the pronunciation of your name there. Uh, we've got Midman74 and William Forrest is in. As is Graham Broughton and Gear View Mirror. Thank you, each and every one of you. 130 of you uh, is reading on my screen at the moment have turned up to watch me. <coughs> well, the, the title of the video says it all. Really. He doesn't. A fat lad t drinks beer and talks rubbish for an hour. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> The hair fever is <coughs> really uh, clobbering me today as well. I wonder if there's a cure. Um, anyway, um, not, not a lot of things to talk about, planned to talk about tonight, uh, but I will start off as usual because I've made some notes. Be prepared. It was almost like it was a Boy Scout once upon a time. Um, yeah, um, starting this week, for the next couple of three weeks, uh, there's going to be some Saturday videos. Because um, I've just got so much content to get through. Uh, and I want to get it all before it sort of kind of gets out of date, really. Um, so, because um, like, if I've been loaned something i need to get the video made pretty quick so i can get it back to its its owner anyway um saturday tomorrow uh we're looking at that marshall dsl1 combo again i'm absolutely loving that amp by the way really really loving it it's um i'm still using the uh the uh what's it the plugins and the vsts for guitar sounds now and again but it's like um, my first part of call at the moment is just that little Marshall one watt valve amp. It's fantastic, but I've had a few um, people asking, "What does the um, you know the speaker emulated recording output sound like on that amp?" Well, watch tomorrow morning at ten a.m. and you'll find out because that's basically what we're doing there. I've done a, a little bit of a, a solo using the um, <coughs> the the line out on the back and um, it's not a bad sound uh, but you can judge for yourself tomorrow then sunday's video is uh, is a bit of a heavyweight clash it's uh, blondie uh, you saw her earlier let's have another look the john robson scott guitars signature model uh, it's this guitar going up against that gorgeous um fender player series hh telecast that david loaned me um and um so yeah interesting comparison uh you shall have to watch on sunday and see which one is um which one you think is the best i know which one i think is the best but then again uh you already know what my it's it's you know, how can i how can i be um you know objective in that video oh thank you com for piriton you gentleman um so sunday's video is the fender hh player telecaster against my signature guitar then on monday a country solo um well sort of a country solo it's a solo from a song by a country artist but it's not what you would call typically like a albert lee or danny gatton style country solo but it is you know I mean, just think of who is the biggest selling country artist on the planet. And it's a solo from probably his biggest song. So there you go. Um, then on Tuesday, top five Tuesday, as is usual, uh, basically just five useful bits of knowledge uh, for, for guitarists. Things that help you understand the guitar, things that help you find your way around the neck, things that just make playing the guitar a little bit less of a head scratching, counting on your fingers and toes kind of experience. Essentially, it, it was, it, it's all of the kind of things that I figured out when I was learning the guitar that I didn't realize were, you know, music theory. 
um, but you know, just things that have how to make sense of what you're doing in order to remember it better, basically. So that's uh, Tuesday's video. Um, of course, now I've said the music theory word, nobody will watch it, obviously, but uh, that's just the way it goes. Um, then on Wednesday, it's a learn my licks video, and um, I'm posing the question Can you play a country solo on a Gibson Les Paul plugged into a Marshall? Well, I have a go, basically. Um, and then on Thursday, it's a bit of a first for me because um, I'm playing... Yeah, do you remember a few weeks ago when I said, is this the most expensive guitar, most valuable guitar I've ever played, where I had that um, Les Paul that used to belong to Marty Friedman? And, uh, you know, I kind of did that um, sort of rundown of that. We ended up speaking to David, the, uh, the guy who loaned me it. Um, well possibly an even more valuable guitar I'm reviewing on Thursday. It is um, my first ever experience of playing something from the Gibson Custom Shop. And um, yes, so not my guitar, once again, loaned to me by David. He dropped it off when he came and picked up the uh, the HH Telecaster. Uh, but uh, lovely guitar, and you'll, you'll hear all about it on Thursday. And that is uh, what's going on on the channel this week. So we've got on Saturday the uh, emulated output from the uh, Marshall DSL-1. Sunday is the uh, Blondie versus Fender HH Telecaster. Uh, Monday is a solo from probably the uh, biggest selling country artist on the planet. Um, Tuesday is five useful things about the fretboard. Wednesday is country on a Les Paul. And Thursday is it something from the Gibson Custom Shop. That is what we are doing on the channel. Um, let's see what you've been talk, talking about. Oh, I see Ian Clark. Yes, Dolly Parton's greatest hits. <laughs> um, Pablo Hank has got it right there. Uh, isn't Garth Brooks the biggest selling country artist? It is. He is indeed. And it's probably his most kind of rock and roll kind of foot stomping anthemic um you know song that he did um something that's it just put it this way if if when you listen to this song you you don't your toe doesn't start tapping then you need to check your pulse it's one of those um it's a fantastic song and i've been wanting to do the solo from it for, for ages because i used to play it in a band back in about 1990 whenever it was, uh, seven ninety seven or thereabouts. Um, uh, uh, what's that, Cylon Hybrid? Um, when you do an amp test, do you have the meter that shows how loud it is and explain the depth of the sound mostly don't? Um, no, I don't, mate. I, I, I just mic the amp up and move the mic around until it sounds what i hear coming out the monitors matches what's coming out of the uh, the amps speaker and then record it and you know it's volume is is a subjective thing anyway you know um so might be an interesting thing to look into like you know kind of um, getting a, a decibel meter uh, involved in, in some way or form to kind of to have like some sort of um, you know empirical way of, of demonstrating the volume of an amp but it's not what I currently do at the moment um, um, what else we've been talking about um, yeah Dave Pegg's saying have you noticed the people uh, that the faces people pull when uh, playing when playing lead laugh or what yeah well it's uh somebody else was saying on that wah pedal review that i did yesterday um that uh, it's impossible to uh, not make your mouth move when you're doing wah movements i'm gradually getting used to that pedal by the way you know that sort of weird uh where that weird kind of property where it's the, the you know in order to activate it you push the the, the the you just start using it there's no kind of clicky kind of foot switch element to it um you just get sort of tuned into it it's um, a bit of an adjustment if you're a habitual crybaby uh, pedal user but um you know it's it's that long since i've used a crybaby in anger um that it's um 
you know, it, it's just, I'm just like coming to it from, from a fresh start, really. And it, it didn't take me long to get used to it at all. I've just literally, uh, yesterday, finished doing another one of the, um, solo analysis videos that involves using a wah and um i got the solo on the first take and the wah was just absolutely you know fantastic it's not often i get a solo on a first take you know when you see in a lot of these solo videos where there's some kind of what may may, may look like an artistic kind of change of camera angle um yeah usually that's because about three seconds after you know the, it fades from one shot to another it's because on the first shot i've, I've kind of messed up and then i kind of uh cut in from a, a second camera angle and just make it look like it's meant to be that way but it wasn't really anyway this all i got it on the first take and just using that wah it just felt really really natural and and easy to use so i've kind of got acclimatized to it since i bought it uh Uh, Kawas Music is saying, um, is your Marshall DSL one also noisy? Also so noisy when cranking up on the ultra on the ultra channel. Uh, there's a bit of noise, uh, but it's not like unusable. I mean, um, on stage, if you're going to use an amp like that on stage, you probably could actually for small gigs, um, especially if you're mic'd up. On stage, it would easily that the it's an amount of noise that would easily disappear into the background kind of chatter and hubbub of a of a, of a live environment. Um, and when recording, you know, just just a little bit of noise gate, and it, it soon takes care of it. Um, it does, however, um, get a little bit um, a little bit kind of chattery, a little bit kind of um, it's almost like there's a kind of a a woodpecker kind of thing going on if i have a certain pedal um going into the front of the amp on the ultra gain channel um i'll put you out put me put you out the misery basically i've just bought a looper pedal um so because i need one for i don't need one but it's i've thought for a while that one will come in handy for uh certain lessons that i'm doing where i need just to kind of be able to demonstrate something over a chord ramp or something like that so i've got a looper pedal and um with the looper pedal going into the front of the amp, when the amp is on um, the ultra gain channel, there is a bit more noise than you would like. But just under normal circumstances, I don't find it, you know, ridiculously noisy. No more, no noisier than any other amp on a high gain channel. You know, there's that bit of hiss. Um, David Evans is saying, uh, I think I'm leaning towards your train of thought and guitar rig six is great and better than amplitude five, which I'm finding a bit finicky. Yeah. Well, um, amplitude, I, I tried it many, many years ago back in, uh, the mid two thousands and didn't get on with it. I tried the trial version again recently of, um, the, the latest version didn't get on with it and then amplitude got in touch with me and said um oh would you like a, a fully functioning version and kind of te check it out and um you know basically uh do a bit better review for us and they sent me a non-functioning version of it so you know it's so in the end i just said look i'm not going to deal with you anymore this is I'm, I'm i'm not a fan of your products i don't think i ever will be so um you know let's let's shake hands and part as friends um and th that was that so I'm, I'm no fan of amplitude that said plenty of other people get great results with it i know mike from cgs i've heard him get some absolutely monster tones out of it so it's probably me that's at fault rather than amplitude um but I just didn't find it intuitive, and certainly the the version that they sent me, sort of as a as a YouTube review product, was w didn't work. Um, you know, uh, oh, well, it must be our PC that's um, that's at fault. Well, no, it isn't because it's well within the stated system requirements that you say for your software, and it ain't running on my PC. Oh, anyway, uh, Lee said about that the better. I, basically, I don't get on with amplitude, but Guitar Rig Six. Um, in terms of plugins, I'm using it all the time now. Well, for all the time I use plugins. Um, what I'm really using it for is um, for bass. 
I've had a couple of people say that the bass sounds on my uh, on me on me stuff <coughs> is uh, is sounding a lot lot better recently, and that's because I'm using uh, Guitar Rig Six for the bass. There's if you're using it and you're recording bass, uh, look at one of the bass presets. It's called Nice Passive Clean. It's just such a full kind of um, you know kind of punchy. Um, bass sound that it's you know that just sits beautifully in a mix and uh, so i'm using it for bass um i'm also using it on guitar for anything where basically i'm not going to be using a, a british amp sound so for anything where i want like a fender amp tone or anything like that then um that's what i'll use it for i'm just not using bias amp anymore it it, it is it's gone a bit sort of um Bias amp's gone a bit sort of unreliable. It was always a bit sort of system resource heavy, bias amp. Um, like, you know, you couldn't have too many instances of it running at the same time. Uh, but since I've installed it on the uh, on the new PC over there, um, it just keeps cutting out. And I could sort of investigate and kind of logic, raise a ticket with positive grid and everything, but it's... I paid 40 quid for my copy of it a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? And, um, you know, I've had my money's worth out of it, so, you know, I'm, I'm not going to complain. Um, so, uh, Nancy Davis is saying, what looper did you buy? I bought the Lecato uh, one. Let me see if I, it's down. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll unhook it and show you. This one. This is the looper that I've got. It's Lakato. It's bas it basically it's what like one of those little ditto looper pedals, but better because you get in this big LED display here. You get sort of um, a big display of when you're kind of approaching. It's going around in like a circle, and it, it, it tells you when you're coming back to the beginning of the loop. And um, you know, it's got a built-in tuner which I haven't used yet. Um, or anything because I just use this little headstock tuner thing here. Um, but great little looper. I think I paid about 35 quid for it on Amazon. And, um, yeah, it really, really does the, does the job. Um, I, I don't scratch the surface of the capabilities that it can do. I just, it's literally, I just need, I need to play over some chords, stomp, put a chord loop in, and then play over it. But you can, you know, you could get like, you could essentially be, you know, Les Paul with it you know with his kind of multi-layered kind of stuff it's um it, it it really does kind of have a lot of capabilities so um great little looper and um having a lot of fun with it um uh rob is saying what he's saying there rob uh spread the love some amazing prices on larry carlton s sevens at the moment s7 vintage down to 399 and your your model 399 yeah um it's usually i don't know if this is the case because i'm not really kind of a, across all such things but usually when you start seeing uh, a model going down in price like that it's often a, a, an indicator that it's going to be discontinued and there's going to be a, a new model coming out and people are just getting rid of the old stock before the new one arrives uh so i can absolutely absolutely wholeheartedly say if you get the chance to have one of these for 400 quid i think i paid 430 for mine so 399 um is you know about it's a little bit less than what i paid for it um you know but if you can get one of these for a, a decent price then grab one it's it's the best strat style guitar you can buy certainly for under a grand um you know i <laughs> Not that I've played every Strat style guitar you can buy for under a grand, but it, it's just the neck on it is, it's a thing of joy. It feels like something that would come out of like Music Man or something like that. Those really, really kind of fantastically finished necks, uh, the rolled fretboard edges and everything. Um, I absolutely love this guitar. It's the guitar that got me back into Strats, really. Um, I also have another one to show you. Um, anybody got any guesses what this might be? Um, 
if I bring the headstock down, that might give you a little bit of a clue. It's got four on one side and two on the other. Any ideas uh, what what this might be? Any guesses? Any guesses? It's a guitar that I've talked about on this channel a long time ago, it has to be said. But um, a student of mine turned up with this the other day, and um, I just offered him a, a price that uh, he was happy with, and he, uh, he took it. There's a look at the front. Um, not a music man. Not a mu everybody saying music man. Um, no, not not that. It's not music man. It's a guitar that if you'll notice, I'm covering up the twelfth fret at the moment. But if I do that, you'll you'll see that it is an indie guitar. Um, there we go. There's the headstock there. Indie guitars were a brand from about 20 years ago, and they made fantastic guitars at very, very, very budget-friendly prices. And they did do the odd kind of Les Paul copy and Telecaster copy, but the, their main business was on this style of guitar, which I believe is called the Shape model. And, um, you know... People in the budget guitar part of the uh, price spectrum obviously want things that look like Gibsons and Fenders uh, because uh, indie didn't really kind of survive. But it's a shame because this is a lovely guitar. Um, it's got, I think, um, Vanson humbucker peanut size P90s in it. And you, uh, this is actually the guitar I'm using in tomorrow's video when I'm doing the uh, the uh, emulated line out on the Marshall. Um but, um, you know, I gave 150 quid for this and um, it's it's going to crop up every now and again in, in videos. It's just it's just because I wanted an indie guitar for, you know, for, for a long time now. So um, because the uh, I had the chance to get one for a price that I was happy with, albeit not one of the kind of uh, more outlandish Liberace style models, which you know me, that doesn't really uh, kind of fit my uh, aesthetic anyway. Um, but, um, you know, very happy with it. So you'll see this tomorrow. Uh, let me put it back on the stand. So there we go. Um, oh, Graham Reeves is in. How are you, Graham? Nice to see you, mate. Excuse me, I just need another beer. Uh, James Turner saying, what's indie? Yeah, as I said, they were a British guitar brand from about 20 years ago. The guitars weren't made in the UK. They were doing like the same, essentially the same sort of business model that uh, Chapman Guitars do, a UK brand, but the guitars are made overseas. That one was made in Korea. And, um, you know, and they just didn't really kind of catch the, the, the sort of guitar buying public's imagination. And the, the, I think there is still some kind of version of the company trading, but they're not really, you know, they, they were, they were like, I remember everywhere in all the guitar magazines um, back then, there was just adverts, full page adverts for them and everything and reviews and glowing testimonials and everything. But they just didn't really catch on. And I think it's a crying shame because they're fantastic guitars. Um, uh, Deco do the same. Uh, Gordon Smith pickups P90s. Gordon Smith do P90 pickups. Um, when you go onto their website, you can spec up a guitar with, um, you know, they do uh, regular single coils. They do regular humbuckers and they do P90s. And you can spec the guitar up with you whatever guitar you spec up. You can spec up with like any combination of those pickups, and you know, and, and basically, if if you're thinking yes, I love the guitar, but my guitar has to have Seymour Duncan's, then you can specify whatever pickups you want. Um, I have another pickup review coming up. By the way, uh, that's something else we're going to be doing in the near future. I've been shopping again on the Iron Gear website. And um, I've got a set of these, these Tesla Shark pickups, which if you take the uh, the last three letters of Tesla, S-L-A, and the first two letters of Shark, S-H, 
S L A S H, it kind of gives you an idea of whose tone they are attempting to get close to. They're basically um, a copy, a knockoff, a replica, an homage to however you want to uh, describe it. They're basically uh, kind of aping the sound of the uh, Seymour Duncan Alnico Pro 2. I've heard nothing but good things about those pickups, and um, yeah. I've played a couple of guitars briefly that have got them in and been impressed with them, but um, I thought it was about time I tried them out myself. So, what guitar are they going to be in? Well, that leads me to the story about why I'm, I was in a bit of a funny mood at the beginning of the live stream, it has to be said, because I've had a bit of hassle today, um, courtesy of a certain guitar company uh, who will remain nameless because I've given them chance to... Um, to put matters right, whether they do or not, remains to be seen. Uh, and a certain courier company who, uh, who who will not remain nameless, it's Parcel Force. Um, they basically, they, they stuffed one of these cards through me door. Um, you know, sorry you were out. Actually, no, I wasn't out. You just didn't bother ringing this sodding doorbell. Um... So that means tomorrow I've got to go and uh, traipse up to the post office and, and, and pick up the uh, the guitar, the guitar that these pickups are going to be going into. Um, and um, I've emailed, I emailed Parcel Force, and they, they were just basically about as much use as an ashtray on a motorbike. Um, and, um, yeah, just a, a chocolate fire guard or chocolate teapot is, is about as much use. But, you know, they, they've just, you know, here's what they said, right? Uh, you have to go and pick it up from the post office tomorrow. We can't re-deliver it tomorrow. Um, why? Because it's at the post office. All right, so you, you people who have got, like, a fleet of vans can't go and pick it up from the post office. But me, who doesn't have a van... I have. I can go and pick it up from the post anyway. Um, but the, um, the 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 guitar company concerned that um, you know I, I emailed them today saying you know what you're going to do about this. Um, you sat on my order for four days before dispatching it, and uh, now um, <laughs> your chosen courier has caused me a lot of grief. Um, but I've not heard anything back from them yet. Anyway, um, I won't. I won't get onto a onto like an Alan Partridge style rant about that. Um, suffice to say that we're going to be looking at these uh, Iron Gear Tesla Shark pickups uh, pretty soon. And um, again, if they are as good as I think they're going to be, then they are a, definitely a pickup to um, to to watch out for. Um, uh, Uh, let's have a look. Jason King saying, Evening, John. I have some IMD pickups in my Squire Tally, a rolling mill, and an Alchemist 90. Um, no, Cal B, it's not Faisley. It's not Faisley. <laughs> um, um, let's have a look. Um, and Dr. Gomez is saying, I have Tesla Sharks on my Les Pauls. They're excellent. This is it. That's all I've ever heard about uh, those Tesla Shark pickups. Um, just great, great, great reviews. Um, uh, Dave's saying, John's gratuitous leg shot on camera. Yes, it is that time of year when the shorts have come out of the uh, out of the wardrobe. Unfortunately, though, I don't know what's happened. They've shrunk in the wardrobe since last year. Can't imagine what's happened. Um, uh, let's talk... Um, uh, Siren Hybrid. Um, my son ordered a laptop. We watched how we got out of the van and threw it over the fence and pushed a note through the door. Yeah, that, that's not the only grief we've had with uh, couriers this week. I'm currently in a in a in a bit of a battle with um, Mr. Bezos's company, um, Amazon. You know, I only use them because they're so convenient. But um, you know, it's just. Uh, basically, we ordered something. It was, I think it was that wire pedal, actually. Um, that was the one. Uh, cause, no, because I, I didn't buy that from Amazon, did I? I bought something. It was the looper pedal. That was it. Bought that from Amazon. Um, and um, I'm sat up here working away, 
faffing around editing, editing a video or something like that, or might have been in a lesson. And um, anyway, I go downstairs, and the wife said, did you order something from Amazon? I said, well, yes. Oh, well, it's there. She says, the driver just walked straight into the house. You know, just didn't ring the doorbell, didn't knock on the door, nothing like that, just let himself in, just opened the front door and walked in and chucked the package onto the, onto the, uh, onto the armchair. You know, so um, there's, um, I've raised a bit of a stink about that. Um, that's, that's you know, it's one thing kind of the driver thinking, oh, well, I thought it was okay to leave it in the porch. Fair enough. But when out, when your house doesn't have a porch and they just walk straight into your living room, that's um, that's a little bit naughty. So I've um, I've lodged a complaint. Um, anyway, the beer is making it all better. Uh, um. Cal B saying, this is what happens when no one wants to pay for shipping. I'm quite happy to pay for shipping, Cal. You know, I'm quite happy for somebody to earn a living by um, doing deliveries. You know, I don't care whether that is uh, as a, you know, an add-on fee that you pay. You know, it, the, the product costs this much and then it's this much for shipping. Or whether they say, say free shipping and then they, they, they add that on to the... Um, you know the, the the price of the of the goods. What I am starting to do, though, is I'm keeping um, a log of which companies that I buy from tend to use which couriers and um, companies that courier companies that I've had bad experiences with. If I know that a particular company, a particular retailer, online retailer uses that courier, then I just just don't order from them. Um, Uh, what's it? Dave Lewis is saying, John, you need very sure. I'm not sure what that is, mate. Um, yeah, Time Prophet saying, I always get worried when I hear Hermes are delivering. Yeah, um, I um, I've told this story before, but back in the days when I was doing the guitars for good causes things, I shipped a guitar to its final destination um, via Hermes. It turned up damaged. They'd sold me insurance and then turned around and said, Oh, well, yeah, but you, we don't insure guitars. Well, why did you sell me the insurance on the guitar that you damaged when you knew it was a guitar you were, um, when you, that you were transporting? So, um, yeah, I'm with you on that, Dash Shaf. Uh, DPD, the least trouble, and Yodel, the worst. Uh, the regular maker bollocks of the old regular maker bollocks of it though. Yeah. DPD, what I like about DPD is um you get a text with like an hour time slot that they're going to turn up and it's always without fail, kind of right almost to the minute bang in the middle of that time slot. Um and you know, you get a named driver who's going to turn up and like I know I went to the point where I know our local DPD driver is called Nigel, great bloke. And um, if you're out, if you miss, if he misses you, then he circles back a little bit later at the end of his run to see if he can catch you again. He, he goes the extra mile. Great bloke. I'm not saying that's company policy, but that's certainly what um, he does. So if I know something is going to be get getting delivered by DPD, then you know I'll pay an extra tenner or whatever because that retailer is using a courier that I trust. Um, oh, he hello, Rex. I didn't see you in there. Uh, you you are taking your Lakato Looper uh, for some songwriting sessions with my bandmates in uh, Way North Country, Montana. Also planning on catching the Avid Brothers show. Um, well, nice to know that um, it's not just me that is very, very impressed with this. I had one of the uh, the Ditto Loopers when they first came out. Gosh, that'll have been about 10 years ago, won't it? And everybody was saying, what a great little pedal this is, and it's so cheap, and it's so usable and everything. And it was. But they've kind of stayed about the same price. Um, and, you know, this, I just love the fact that, you know, you get this big... 
circular display when it's it's kind of like a clock face and it's coming okay so we're coming back to the beginning of the loop and hit it you know it's just such an an intuitive thing to use uh really really oh already this is become going to become um you know probably towards the end of the year you know because it's where are we now july so next month it will be August, and then it will be Christmas, obviously. Um, <laughs> I don't mind Christmas. I love Christmas. In fact, I just used to prefer it when it started in December. Um, but, you know, towards the back end of the year, I'm going to be doing uh, a video about, like, my favourite pieces of kit that I've uh, I've reviewed this year, and that is a strong contender for that list. Um, let's have a look, see what else we're talking about. Um um uh, Johnny Random Sin had my eye on that Lacart or Looper. Do it, Johnny. You you know, it's you know uh, once you get to, to, to that sort of price level, I mean I think I paid about 30, 35 quid for it on Amazon or something like that. Um you know it's the there's a lot of them around round about that sort of price point and like harley benton do one and you know joy or do one and um you know the, the the thing as i say it's that led display that's just so useful it just makes it that little bit more intuitive um so yeah can highly recommend it um okay king horse is saying load the gain on your mic i can do that from there is that any better? I know it's... Um, okay, I shall move that further away from me. How's that, everyone? Is that any better? Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look, see what we've got in the uh, in the chat. Um, <laughs> none... <laughs> Uh, Nancy Davis is saying, remember when, we, remember when we used to go to the shops to buy things? Yeah, it's just the changing world, you know. Um, it is the way that uh, the world is going. And, I mean, I would love to support local businesses. Um, you know, the, the problem is that local businesses often are a bit behind the curve. You know, it's, it's a bit like, I'll tell you, <laughs> there's a local electrical store in in red car that um that we had a bit of a dispute with and it was like it was it they just give we bought a television from them years ago and it needed repairing and it was under guarantee and everything was just too much trouble for them you know they they just couldn't be bothered um yet you get the you get an, an online firm that that is hundreds of miles away and you know often the customer service is better that's all i'm saying it's it's you you vote with your wallet you go where you're getting the best deal and the best service and that is just the nature of you know the, the way an economy works um and <laughs> You can, you can bemoan the fact that there are boarded up shop fronts on the high street where businesses used to be, but you know, it, it is the way it is. If people cared that much, including myself, you know, about supporting uh, local enterprises, then those businesses would still be there. Uh, the world is changing and we vote with our wallets, despite what we might say about, you know, kind of uh, what we think and what we kind of would, would aspire to think. Um, when it's convenient and when it's cheap and when the you know when by and large you get custom good customer service then you know you go where your money goes where that um <clears throat> that is going to be the case how's me mic by the way now have i um have i stopped uh clipping Some pubs have gone cashless. I won't go in on principle, says Steve Barr. Stevie Barr. Yeah, I must admit. Um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I just I remember. Gosh, this is back in the late eighties. Uh, the the pub I used to drink in when I was a student. It was in a sort of a tourist kind of area, the Lake District in the UK, and. Um, 
there was um, an American tourist came in and uh, didn't realise that the convention in the UK is that you don't run up a tab. You, um, you pay for a round of drinks every time you get a round of drinks. And, um, you know, got anyway, he managed to convince them to let him run up a tab. And then he, at the end of the night, he pulled out a credit card and, and asked to pay by credit card. And they were like, we don't accept credit cards in here. We're a pub, <laughs> you know. So they sent him out to the local um, cash point or ATM, as we now call them. And uh, he had to draw out some money uh, to, to go and pay his, his bar tab. Um, so it's just the, the idea that pubs are now not only taking credit cards, but some of them will only take credit cards. That's a bit of a, that's, you know, kind of fail to compute. Um, so, um, Hans is saying, uh, I had to write a check recently, first in ages, noted the issue did on my most, on my mostly unused book, 1994. I cannot remember the last time I had a bank account where I had a checkbook. My current my current account, the bank I've had for the moment, I've had been with them since 2013. And when I opened the account with them then, they said, and do you need a checkbook? I said, well, not really. Because even in you know 2013, I hadn't written a check or needed to write a check in ages. So um, it's uh, a bit of a, yeah, just the, the, the world changes. The world changes. Um, what, where was I going with that? I can't remember. Um, yes, cash. Cash is king. Uh, there's a friend of mine who shall remain nameless. Um, but um, he has two phrases. Is the, There's cash. And then there's cash, cash. And I said, go on then. I said, uh, what, I'll buy it. What, what's cash, cash? He said, cash is cash that the wife doesn't know about. <laughs> Um, Robin Fawcett saying where do blokes get their clothes from now surely not all online um, I will occasionally see a t-shirt and I'll think yeah I'll have that there's a there's a shop in Redcar called uh, well it's called Goodwins now but it used to be called Yorkshire Trading but it's still the same company that owns it and um, they often have uh, racks full of t-shirts there that are like factory seconds that are like missized and stuff like that. So you've just got to kind of gauge the size of them. It might have small written on it and it'll be kind of double XL or something like that. And they'll have, um, they'll have those on for a quid, a pound, pound for a t-shirt. Thank you very much. I'll have one of those. I'll, in fact, I'll, if I can find enough, I'll have two or three. Um, and apart from that, it's like, for me, it's, um, I, I'm, I'm that gentleman of a certain age that, you know, what do you buy me for Christmas and birthdays? Um, you know, hair care products, I think not. Um, you know, I, I don't wear aftershave. I don't wear any of that kind of male grooming kind of nonsense. So the wife just gets me, you know, kind of uh, undercrackers and socks and a few T-shirts and, you know, some uh, some of my habitual tracksuit bottoms that I wear when it's not warm enough to, on the 364 days of years, when, when it's not warm enough to wear shorts. Um so that's where most of my clothes come from. Um, <laughs> a wise man once told his wife nothing because he was a wise man. <laughs> um, do you have a T-shirt that says, I do hope you are well? I don't at the moment, Stuart, but I can make that happen. Um, it's a while since I've updated my Teespring store. I should really go on there and do it. It's just like, there's a video to do. There's a solo to tab out. There's a backing track to make. There's this to do. There's lessons to do. There's, you know, so like the, 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 the kind of t-shirt store has been a little bit kind of neglected for the past year or so. Uh, I must go on and, and refresh that and do some new designs, but that will definitely be, um, one of them. Graham Broughton saying Goodwins have been closing down for months. Um, yeah, the, 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 they're closing down, but they're moving just across the high street in Redcar to another building. Um, uh, let's have a look and see what... Uh, James Hunt saying, absolutely hate getting pants and socks for, bre for presents. I love it, because it means I don't have to go out and buy them, you know. 
But I tell you, every Christmas and birthday for me, it's the same. Um, I will get usually one or two bottles of decent malt whiskey, um, a case of beer, and then perhaps a couple of kind of funny T-shirts and, you know, with kind of slogans on that I can't wear on YouTube. Um, and um, then the rest of the, the rest of it is just you know kind of things that will just go in the uh, socks and underpants drawer. <coughs> um, let's uh, put this up reeled in. If you're of a certain age and remember the state of budget guitars before squires were around, you couldn't have bought those on the net even with it back then. You had to try them first. Yeah, indeed. I would, I would say, that, I mean, Squires were, does anyone else in the UK, by the way, remember? Um, probably the only UK TV ad for an electric guitar. Um, it was in the early 80s, probably about 83 or 84, because I seem to remember watching this ad in my mother's living room before I went away to college, uh, which will have mean, meant that it was around about early 84. Um, and it was it was a TV ad for Squire Stratocasters, and oh god, that was <laughs> it's like I remember video recording on the Ferguson Video Star the ad for that the, the, that ad for Squire guitars, um, and that was like I, I remember that the price was two hundred and twelve pounds for a Squire Stratocaster in nineteen eighty three or eighty four back then, but the, for me the big game changer. for budget guitars because even throughout the rest of the 80s you still had some really really awful electric guitars that at around about the 150 to 200 pound mark i mean anyone else remember the marlin sidewinder god what an awful guitar that was um for me it was in 1993 when yamaha brought out the pacifica 112 and suddenly for less than 200 quid you could buy an electric guitar that wasn't made of plywood. Imagine that, you know, because even by about 89, you know, the Squire Strat, the, 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 the kind of, the quality had slipped and they were made from plywood. And um, the, the, I mean, when they first came out, there was um, um, a guitar shop near me called, long since disappeared, called Guitar Zan and Bongo Bills. Anyone else from Teesside remember that that um, that lovely institution? Yeah, guitars on and bongo bills, um, and I remember going in there and, and talking to the guy. I was probably about sixteen, seventeen, and he was talking about these Squire Strats. They were getting guys coming in with USA Fenders who were putting the guitars in the window to sell on consignment. That their USA, their seventies USA Strat and buying a, one of these newfangled squires because they were just better guitars. But by the time you got to, like, 1989, uh, 88, 89, it was like your squire strap was going to be made, made of plywood and it was going to have, you know, kind of not particularly nice-sounding kind of scratchy pickups in it, you know, with ceramic magnets and, and so on. Um, and then out comes the Pacifica in '93. Alnico pickups, uh, older body, you know, and it's just like, this is just, you know, a game changer. And, you know, I, I did it, I, I did a video on this um, a while ago, uh, a few months ago, about like the, the most important landmark guitars. And that's why I included the Pacifica in that, because it revolutionized the, uh, the budget guitar market. Um, uh, Pablo Hank bought a, um, a, a guitar from uh, Guitars. And, and Jim Cairns used to work there once upon a time. Now, there's a name to, from a blast from the past. Jim Cairns was a fantastic luthier and guitar tech in this part of the world. Sadly, no longer with us. Um, an absolute genius. If there'd been any justice in the world, he would have been, you know, um, just up there with... So if he was if he was kind of current and around today he would have probably had a youtube channel and he would have been like 
you know, Texas Toast guitars or, you know, Crimson guitars or something like that. He was he was an absolute artisan guitar builder. Um and he just used to work out of his um out of his shed, basically. Um David Evans is saying I remember satellite Les Paul copies in my mum's catalogue back in the late 1970s. That was not my first electric guitar, but it was my first playable electric guitar, a satellite Les Paul copy. Uh, what else have we been talking about while I've been blethering? Um, John Max saying, yes, Yamaha raised the bow with the Pacifica. Um, um, Bruce is saying, Christ, they were, they were over 200 quid in the 80s, didn't know that. Yeah, the, uh, the Marlin Sidewinder was, um, oh, yeah, the, um, the Squire Strat, I think you're referring to. Yeah, 212 quid in 1984. I remember that advert. Yeah, I cannot tell you the number of times I've tried to uh, find that uh, TV ad on YouTube and maybe kind of do some sort of video around it, but, um, you know, it's sadly not there. And Cliff Hogan saying greetings all from Florida. Um, yes, we, we kind of, you've sent us some of your weather over Cliff. Um, well, it feels like Florida here at the moment. It's, it's hot and it's sticky and it's sweaty and it's, um, it, it, we're on course for that typical British summer, you know, you know, the, the, the typical British summer, three warm days and a thunderstorm. That's it. Uh, well, we're, we're right at the peak of the three warm days kind of part of that. Now, excuse me, I need another beer. Um, um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce your name, mate, because I get the feeling it's it's in uh, Welsh, Wales, Welsh. Um but there you are on screen. Um, I, I, it's just not, I'm not condescending. I just don't want to butcher the pronunciation. I quit playing guitar for 12 years. Then last number, November, I started, I decided to start playing again and bought an Ibanez Gem Junior. Uh, good way into it. And Epiphone Les Paul. The Ibanez is amazing after a setup. Yeah, find a bad review of an Ibanez guitar. Um, you know, it's the, the, the amazing thing is, and I only found this out very, very recently, that Ibanez don't build guitars. They don't have a guitar factory. You know, every Ibanez guitar is built by one of these kind of, you know, subcontractors like Fuji Gen or Samic or probably caught I'm, I'm i'm just riffing here i'm not sure not sure that caught me or world musical instruments but, but you know these these factories that make guitars for lots of other brands well that's who ibanez use and uh you know for, for a long time i don't think they've had um any any factory of their own that make that that make ibanez guitars which i just think is given the fact that they are you know not just a big player in the industry, but you know they've got a brand which which means something. Y you would think, wouldn't you, that they would have um, that they want to, they would want to take that kind of um, brand in house because otherwise it's it's reliant upon the quality control of factories that they don't own. But anyway. <laughs> fun loving ramekin is saying anyone else listening to this at work and being tortured every time a can is open i'm sorry mate not sorry not not sorry really um just make sure you pick up some cold ones on the way home mate um um i'm sure uh, maiden man is saying um I'm, I'm sure I'd, the a ESP are pretty much just a guitar broker. Well, yeah. Um, maybe it's more common in the industry than I realised. I mean, I know there are these big factories that do, like, huge bulk orders for other companies, um, you know, for, for brands, rather. I just I just found it surprising that a, a brand as iconic as Ibanez didn't have an in-house manufacturing uh you know, facility. Um, Hans Zarkov is saying, who makes Harley Benton? That is a very closely guarded secret. Um, 
but the uh, the SC five fifty two is made in Indonesia, and the the volume that they made them in that they are made in, you can kind of deduce that it's it's possibly Cortec or Wildwood, uh, because those are the those are two of the biggest manufacturers in Indonesia. Um, but yeah, trying to find out who actually make Harley Benton guitars is, uh, I've looked into this and it's, it's not easy to find out basically, but you can sort of deduce. And I must say that, uh, that SC 552 that I had that ended up in, um, well, Thomas has got it now, Cowus music. Um, you know, it, it sort of did feel a bit like a PRS SE in the way that it, it played and everything. So that would kind of fit with the uh, the Cortec theory. Um, uh, where are we? I've just noticed we've gone over the hour, but you know what? I'm going to stay here till I finish me beer. Uh, Cliff is saying... Uh, Purchased a Harley Benton CST24 based on your review videos, John. Very happy with their product. Those CST24s, I mean, I I had one for many, many years, and I did a few mods on it and stuff, and um, had the opportunity to sort of A, B it a couple of times against, you know, PRS SEs. And, well, the, the, the one that sticks in my mind is when I did... Um, an a b video blind test between the uh the cst24 albeit with vanson replacement pickups in it but you know vanson pickups they're hardly kind of boutique pickups are they um although you will find vanson pickups in a boutique guitar blondie um <clears throat> and, and nobody could tell the difference you know i said okay you know Email you know, kind of write in the comments what um, w which guitar was which, and over fifty percent of the people thought that the better sounding guitar was I can't remember which way around it was but guitar A for for example, um, and guitar A was the Harley Benton, um, so you know there is a, every time I do a video about Harley Benton guitar and I've got one coming up in the next few weeks. Um, one of the, the, the new telecastery kind of ones, the TE62s. 125 quid, by the way, for a guitar, a telecaster with Alnico pickups, through body stringing, and a roasted maple neck. Hello. <laughs> you know, is it is is it me or is that just ridiculous value for money? Um but every time I do a video about a Harley Benton guitar, I know there will be a certain con contingent of people who are just scouring YouTube for videos about Harley Benton guitars purely so they can kind of go into the comments and make snarky comments about it, you know, but it's, it just goes with the territory. Anyway, chaps, um, I'm starting to get... Let's put it this way. What goes in has to come out. And that's just gone in and um i'll leave you with those thoughts anyway it's been a blast as always you've improved my mood no end from my hassle with uh, parcel force and uh yeah thank you for turning up and watching a fat bald lad talk rubbish for an hour and i'll keep on doing it till you're sick of me but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say time gentlemen please <laughs>